We're at the California Dairy Sustainability Summit in Sacramento, California. I'm with Dr. Frank McLerner of the a professor at the University of California, Davis, and perhaps one of the foremost authorities on air emissions in agriculture. He made a very dynamic presentation this morning to kick off the conference, and he made a great number of good points. We're gonna talk about a couple of them. One is he dispelled some of the myths we hear about what a big impact uh, livestock and livestock agriculture supposedly has on methane and air pollution. Uh, d doctor, just give us a few highlights of your research. So um, our research came about by the urban myth that livestock produces more greenhouse gases and more air pollutants than all cars, trucks, trains, planes, ships in the world combined. Now if that sounds fishy to you, it sounded fishy to me, to my team. So we um, conducted research to find out what the true contributions are and sure enough found that it was not more than an urban myth that the agency that came up with these assertions uh, used different methods to look at the impact of livestock versus those they used for looking at the impact of transportation. In a, in a state like California, on the greenhouse gas side alone, cows produce about 5% of all greenhouse gases. Dairy is 5% of all greenhouse gases. The transportation sector about 50%. So it's an order of magnitude higher. So for those of you out there, and I don't mean the dairymen, but the special friends of the dairy industry, so to say, who think that they need to discourage the use of uh, consuming milk, yogurt, and cheese, I have bad news. And that is you're sitting on the wrong horse and you're going into a direction that will not get you anywhere because the dairy industry undoubtedly has an environmental footprint. But like no other industry, it has a plan forward and it produces a product that is unique in its nutritional value. And the dairy industry has a environmental track record that is unlike anyone else. But you also have one big disadvantage. And that is that the industry by and large has for the longest time not really owned up on this topic. Has not engaged enough on this important societal issue. And I'm encouraged and I'm heartened by a the number of people I see in the crowd, not just dairymen and consultants, but also AT regulators, legislators, and so on. People coming together saying, we have issues that we need to address. We do this jointly. The agencies now coming to the table saying, we want to work not, um, we don't want to tell the industry what to do, but we want to work with them to achieve goals um, in more of a carrot and not stick approach. Thank you, Doctor. And one other point that you made uh, very compellingly in your presentation and then again on a panel discussion this afternoon, and you were encouraging all of us to share the facts and share our stories uh, to help tell the story of animal agriculture. Uh, give us your point of view on that. So just think about it. Who is the most proficient expert in on how cows are milked, housed, how manure shall be processed and used, how crops can be grown, who is the most proficient expert? It's not me, the academician. It is all these dairymen. The problem is that many of them don't want to talk to the public. They have been private people all their lives. Uh, they say, well, we know what we do, but uh, they're not really into talking to the public. I think we have a wonderful opportunity. The opportunity is that we have a growing number of particularly young people who are interested in food. That's great, because you are the experts of food. However, you now need to take the leadership and communicate with those people who are interested in food how you grow it, how you grow it in a sustainable way, how you produce high-quality, nutritious food without depleting natural resources, how not to waste that food, how to process that food. The whole, the whole story around food is your story. You are the experts. Be the experts and don't be shy about it. Because there are people out there in large numbers who want you to stop doing what you're doing. For example, the plant-based alternative providers of milk, meat, and eggs, and so on. They don't just want to offer an alternative product 
and say, here, you know, try this one. It's an alternative to milk or to meat. They're saying, you are the worst thing that happened to our planet. You are inhumane to animals, you're destructive to the environment, you produce an unsafe product. And I'm asking you, is this your legacy at stake? I think it is. So it's time for you to wake up to it. And you made that point compellingly this morning, and we appreciate you sharing it again. Now, you're a recent uh, user of Twitter, and all of our folks hearing us can uh, follow you on Twitter, and I recommend it. He, you really have some great facts that you share. Uh, just tell us your Twitter handle. It's GHG for greenhouse gas, GHG Guru. We're speaking with the GHG Guru here, Dr. Frank Mitlerner from the uh, University of California at Davis. This is Joel Hastings for This Week in Dairy. Thank you very much.